fans, Happy Trooper here with another prop build. In this episode, we'll construct a DLT-19 heavy blaster rifle using parts from a home improvement store. The following hand tools were used in this build. A jigsaw, a dremel, a drill, hacksaws, files and a rasp, and screwdrivers. Feel free to change any of the tools, materials, and methods used in this build. The parts list can be found in the description section below. To get started, download and print all of the templates from the link in the description below. I used Adobe Reader to print the templates. Because of the large size of a few of the templates, they will need to be printed with the poster option. I suggest ticking the cut marks option to show where the paper should be trimmed. The other templates should be printed with the actual size option. Trim the multi-page templates, tape them together, and then cut out all of the templates. Place your templates over the 3 quarter inch wood and trace it with a pencil. Cut out all of the pieces using a jigsaw. Some of these cuts have sharp curves. Do not force your blade to make the turn. Instead, start a new cut to adjust your angle. To hollow out the trigger hole, drill a hole in the center of the trigger and use a Dremel cutting bit to cut out the circle. To smooth out the inside, switch to a Dremel sanding drum. After all of your cuts, you should have the following pieces cut from your 3 quarter inch wood. Don't worry if you have cut marks on your wood, these can easily be repaired with putty. Mix a batch of Bondo all-purpose putty and hardener cream. Apply it to any areas that require repair on the middle receiver piece. Because this middle piece will soon be sandwiched between two other pieces of wood, now is the best time to apply filler and also sand down the edges. After the putty has dried, use some 60 grit sandpaper to smooth out the dried putty. You'll also want to round out the edges. I found that wrapping a piece of 60 grit sandpaper around a small piece of one and a quarter inch PVC pipe allowed me to hit rounded areas and edges rather easily. I also wrapped the 60 grit paper around a sanding sponge. After you're happy with the edges, go over them again with 120 grit sandpaper and smooth things out. Using wood glue and clamps, secure the components together. Allow the glue to dry overnight. Don't worry, you can still make some progress while these parts dry. Take your one and a quarter inch PVC pipe and affix the PVC butt stock template. Using a hacksaw, cut the PVC. Take a corner brace and line it up against the newly cut piece of pipe. Use a pencil to make a drill target mark. Use a 332nd inch bit to make your initial hole, then widen it with an 1164th inch bit. The hole should be wide enough for a number 832 half inch screw to pass through. Use a Dremel cone bit to countersink the screw head. Mount the corner brace inside of the one and a quarter inch pipe. To prevent the nut from coming off, I put some E6000 around it and the threads of the screw. 
Next, we will repeat this process twice more with the one and a quarter inch PVC couplings. You will notice that the corner braces do not fit inside the coupling. Using a Dremel, sand down the edges slightly on the corner braces so that they fit comfortably inside the one and a quarter inch coupling. Place the corner braces outside of the coupling and make a drill target mark with a pencil. Drill out the holes, use a cone bit to countersink the screw head, mount the corner braces inside of the coupling with a number 832 half inch screw, and cover the nuts and threads with E6000. Repeat this process once more, as the receiver will need one and a quarter inch PVC coupling mounts on the front and the rear. After your stock and receiver components have dried, even out all of the surfaces with 60 grit and 120 grit sandpaper. You may need to use files too. Mix up some more Bondo and fill in the screw holes on the PVC parts and also any gaps that may be present on the wood components. Sand the Bondo off of the wood components with 60 grit sandpaper and follow it up with 120 grit to smooth it out. Sand the Bondo off of the PVC couplings with 120 grit sandpaper and follow up with 220 and 400 grit to smooth it out. Place the one and a quarter inch PVC butt stock pipe to the stock as shown. Center it and make a pencil mark. Use a 332nd inch bit to make a pilot hole. Secure the pipe with one of the screws that came with the corner braces. Repeat the same process for the rear of the receiver. Center one of the PVC couplings on the rear of the receiver and mark the drill targets with a pencil. Use a 332nd inch bit to drill pilot holes. Secure the coupling to the receiver using screws that came with the corner braces. Repeat the same process for the front of the receiver with the other PVC coupling. I use 2 inch wood screws to secure the connection. Starting with the rear of the receiver, I put some protective tape around the coupling and used a rasp to begin shaping the corners. Whip up another batch of Bondo and apply it to the wood and PVC joints on the receiver. I suggest doing one side at a time. Bondo does dry very quickly. After one side dries, apply putty to the other side. Not only will you have a DLT-19 at the end of this project, you'll also have massive biceps after all of the sanding that you'll do in the next phase. Using 120 grit sandpaper, begin shaping the dried Bondo. You can now hit all of the edges on the receiver and the stock. Use 60 grit to grind it down. Use a rasp if you really need an aggressive cut. Apply some E6000 in the rear receiver coupling. Attach the stock and let it dry for 24 hours. After it dries, apply Bondo and then sand it down.
Trim the barrel templates and affix them to the 1 and 1 quarter inch PVC pipe. Using a hacksaw, cut the pipe to length. Drill out the holes with a small drill bit. Gradually increase the drill bit size to enlarge the holes. I had to use a Dremel cutting bit and sanding drum to get large holes. To make the middle ring on the barrel, attach the 1 1⁄4 quarter inch PVC coupling template on top of the 1 1⁄4 quarter inch coupling. Place the coupling on a piece of pipe to allow you to get a better grip. Cut the end of the coupling off with a hacksaw. Sand the rough edges down with 60 grit and 120 grit sandpaper. The ring will now fit over the 1 1 quarter inch barrel. To construct the hexagon shaped end piece on the barrel, place the 1 inch by 3 quarter inch PVC adapter in a vise and saw off the small end. Sand the rough part with 120 grit sandpaper. Obtain your 7 8 inch diameter wooden dowel and cut it down to a 20 and a half inch length. Wrap friction tape around one end, it should come out about 5 millimeters, enough to give it a snug fit in the 1 and 1 quarter inch PVC outside barrel. You'll also want to make one rotation with friction tape around the hexagon shaped end cap. Obtain the circle template and place a 1 quarter inch PVC coupling on top. Using a pencil, Mark cut lines on the coupling using the template lines as a reference. Use a Dremel engraving bit to make the cuts in the coupling. Cut one of the 1.5 inch conduit clamps in half and sand off the inside ridges using 60 grit sandpaper. Sand off any lettering too. Go over the surfaces of the 1 1 quarter inch coupling and the 1 1⁄2 inch conduit clamps with 400 grit sandpaper. Apply E6000 to the conduit clamps and affix them to the center of the 1 1 quarter inch PVC coupling. Allow the adhesive to dry for 24 hours. While the adhesive dries, obtain the two wood dowel templates, apply them to the dowel and cut them down to size. Using the target marks from the template, drill a pilot hole through the center of both dowels. Finish the hole with a 3 16 inch bit. This will allow a 2 inch number 1024 screw to pass through both dowels. Secure the dowels with a screw and nut. Mark one of the sides of the assembly as the top. Using a pair of pliers, bend off the end tabs on the shelving brackets. Smooth out any rough edges with emery cloth. Affix the drill target templates to the shelving brackets and drill a pilot hole. Finish with a 1 8 inch bit, enough to allow a number 6 oval head machine screw to pass through. Label one of the brackets with an L and the other with an R. Line them up against the dowel assembly and make a drill target mark on the small dowel as shown. After the adhesive is dried on the coupling and conduit clamps, mix up some Bondo and fill in the gap on top. When the Bondo has dried, sand it off.
Place the coupling assembly on top of the two wooden dowels. Use a pencil to mark drill targets through the conduit clamp screw openings. Drill four pilot holes with a 332nd inch bit. Finish the top two holes for the conduit clamps with a 532nd inch bit. Secure the coupling assembly to the wood dowel assembly using 3 quarter inch number 12 oval head screws. Next, secure the two shelving brackets to the wood dowel assembly using 3 quarter inch number 6 screws and a number 6 finishing washer. Take one of the mending plates and drill out the center hole with a 3 16 inch bit. The hole should allow a 2 inch number 1024 screw to pass through. Next we'll connect the bipod assembly to the barrel. Place the wooden dowel inside of the 1 and 1 quarter inch PVC pipe. Attach the barrel to the bipod coupling and attach the hexagon end cap. Take a number 1024 rubber well nut and cut off the wide part with a pair of scissors. Count six holes down from the top of the barrel and drill a pilot hole through the dowel and the bottom of the PVC barrel with a 332nd inch bit. Finish the hole with a 316 inch bit. Insert a 2 inch number 1024 screw and secure the bottom with the number 1024 rubber well nut. Place the mending plate between the bipod arms and barrel. Using a sharpie, make a drill target mark on each side. Drill out the holes with a 1 16 inch bit and increase to a 9 64 inch bit. This will allow a 3 8 inch number 632 screw to pass through. Mark a line two holes down from each edge on the mending plate. Cut off the ends of the mending plate with a Dremel metal cutting disc. Place the trimmed metal plate inside of the shelving brackets and secure it with a 3 8 inch number 632 pan screw with a washer and nut. To check everything, attach the bipod assembly to the barrel, run the 2 inch screw through the top of the dowel, attach the well nut, go through the mending plate, and attach a number 1024 nut on the end. Cut out all of the templates for the plastic greeblies. Fasten them to a plastic sign with tape and cut them out using Lexan scissors. To make grip lines on the grips, use a metal straight edge as a guide and carve out lines using a Dremel engraving bit. The same technique can be applied to the fake screw heads that will be attached to the bipod. We'll also use a piece from the leftover 7 8 inch wooden dowel. Apply the template, cut to length, and then cut in half lengthwise using the vise as a guide.
Next, place the half-inch LB-type conduit body in a vise and trim off the circular parts. Sand the rough parts with 120 grit sandpaper. For the piece with a hollow center, drill a hole in the middle and cut out the remainder with a Dremel cutting bit. Sand the inside edges down with a sanding drum. Smooth out all of the edges and corners with 120 grit sandpaper. Apply E6000 and secure the plastic to the receiver. We will repeat the same sanding and gluing steps for all of the plastic pieces. To make bends in this piece, use the template lines as a reference to mark the edges. Make straight lines on the back of the plastic. Use a lighter to heat up the plastic and bend it along the edges. To finish off this piece, drill small pilot holes with a 5 64 inch bit. Use a 3 32nd inch bit on the bottom hole. Use half inch number 4 pan head screws as decorations on top, and use a half inch number 6 oval screw with a number 6 finishing washer on the bottom hole. Drill two more pilot holes at the bottom, and insert two more half inch number 4 pan head screws. Place the grip templates back on and drill a pilot hole, followed by a 7 32nd inch bit. Insert the 3 quarter inch Chicago bolts. Repeat the same process for the area on the rear of the grip, but use a half inch Chicago bolt. For the gun sight screw, Mark a drill target through a number 8 finishing washer and use a 7 64 inch bit to make a pilot hole. 
Screw in a 5 8 inch number 8 oval head screw with a finishing washer. Repeat for the other side. To attach the top cover, make drill target marks and drill with a 3 32nd inch bit. Attach the cover and secure with 1 inch number 6 oval head screws and number 6 finishing washers. To attach the feed block, place the LB conduit box on the top cover and drill two holes with a 564 inch bit. Attach the conduit box with half inch number four pan head screws. I also trimmed down another mending plate and fastened it on top of the T-shaped plastic with E6000. Once it dried, a few holes were drilled to give it some depth. I had some dowel left over, so I cut a piece about 3.5 inches, or 9 centimeters, drilled a hole through the dowel and in the receiver, then fastened it with a 1.5 inch number 6 wood screw. For the last part of the assembly, I placed a drill target template on the front of the inside barrel, drilled a pilot hole with a 3.32 inch bit, and also drilled a hole in the mouthwash cap. Next I fasten the two with a 1 inch number 6 screw. Now that everything has been dry fit, take it all apart and get it ready for painting. In a well ventilated area, spread out your parts and apply your choice of primer. Allow the primer to cure for 24 hours. If you have any spots in the primer, gently go over them with 800 grit sandpaper. On the next day, spray the inside barrel with metallic aluminum and spray the remaining parts with flat black. I waited another 24 hours and applied a second coat of flat black. This next step is optional. To give the DLT-19 a little personality, I decided to go with a gunmetal finish on the outside barrel. I gently rubbed very fine steel wool on the barrel to create small ridges and scratches. Next I applied powdered graphite with a flat 3 quarter inch brush. Don't be shy, put a generous amount on and rub it in. To seal the powdered graphite, apply a light mist coat of clear satin spray. If there are spots on the finish, go over them with more graphite while it is still wet. To give the stock a bakelite appearance, I applied polyurethane in a satin finish. It took three coats to get the right finish. Next, I used a dry brushing technique to simulate wear on the blaster and to give it the illusion that it is metal, not wooden plastic. Using tester, silver enamel, and a flat shader brush, I loaded the brush and removed almost all of the paint on a paper towel. I then went over all of the raised areas and edges to give them a metallic appearance. For the silver ring, I masked off the receiver and used an airbrush to apply all clad two in a chrome finish. You can use the same metallic spray paint that you used for the inside barrel, just make sure your masks are secure. Another option is foil tape, found in most hardware stores. You've now completed the project. Put everything together and give yourself a pat on the back.
out and give me a like. Or better yet, click the subscription button below.